2016 seemed to be the year that kept on giving. There were so many games to play, both good and bad, that it was nearly impossible to keep up with them all. But of course this has its benefits, it certainly kept me busy, and this year gave me some of my favorite gaming experiences of all time. Hey, I'm Snowman and welcome to the third annual Snow Globes, my video game awards for the year. It was so hard to narrow down the choices for these categories, but at least for me, these contenders stood above the rest. That means it's my opinion, please don't get mad at me. Let's dive right in. The first award we'll be giving away is for Best Art Direction. It seemed like this year was chocked full of games that were pushing boundaries. Just when I thought I'd seen it all and couldn't be impressed with how a game looked anymore, I've learned to never underestimate developers in giving us truly breathtaking worlds to explore. While AAAs continue to blur the line of fantasy and reality, indies seem to be modernizing art styles that appeared to be long gone. Let's get to the nominees. Abzu Water levels in gaming seem to get a bad rap. They either have annoying controls or limited breathing mechanics. So what do you do if you want to make an entire game that's a water level? Well, Abzu not only created intuitive controls and removed any worry of breathing, but most importantly, made it so pretty. The realm of Abzu is stunning and packed to the brim with underwater life to find. Each area is unique and fun to explore, from swimming with whales to riding the current, and it's just long enough to be enjoyable the whole way through. It was refreshing to see a journey-like experience in a different setting, and instead of fearing what lies beneath the surface, Abzu made me appreciate the vastness of its beauty. Owlboy I feel like I say this with every new pixel art game that comes out, but Owlboy is the best looking one I've seen yet. When you see the detail in every corner of the map, you start to understand why it took so long to develop. Each location is different and serves the purpose of not only giving us beautiful scenery, but helping push the narrative as well. The polish is so apparent, from the cutscenes to Otis's facial expressions, and I don't think Owlboy would have been nearly as fun if it wasn't so gorgeous to look at. Whenever a discussion of graphical fidelity comes up in my circles, the conclusion we land on always seems to be that having the most pixels or the engine that outputs the best renders and particle effects matters a little if you don't have a cohesive direction to guide that technology. And a lot of the time, doing a lot with a little is the more practical route to take, especially for independent development teams of a dozen or so people at most. In my opinion, no game from 2016 lived more through its aesthetic than Heart Machine's Hyper Light Drifter. The world it puts the player in is a heaving and coughing one far past its prime as a result of some cataclysm many eons ago. We explore the ruins of this once magnificent empire, breathing life into machinery and organisms coated in what I can only describe as post-apocalyptic cyber magitech punk. Not a single pixel is wasted here, and even the jaw-dropping soundtrack by Disasterpiece contributes to an atmosphere that is equal parts curious, animate, slumbering, cadaverous, and most of all, Haunting. And the winner is... Owlboy! Just when you think a certain art style couldn't get any better, D-Pad Studio reminded us that nothing is impossible. Pixel art platformers seemed to be a dime a dozen a few years ago, and I'm so glad that games like Owlboy continue to push limitations and show us that older methods can continue to innovate. Not only did the art direction give us a lush environment to get immersed in, but it also told a meaningful story of an owl discovering what he can truly be. Hopefully Owlboy will inspire even more creative games like this in the future. Up next is the Over the Top Award. This is for the campiest and most ridiculous games of the year. Serious stories and hyper-realism certainly have their place in gaming, but sometimes you just want to bash a dude's skull in, is that so much to ask? These games not only let us live out insane fantasies and do things that would be impossible in real life, but they're incredibly fun in doing so. Your nominees are... Titanfall 2 Man, this game is just the hypest. Who doesn't love giant robots with samurai swords kicking the crap out of each other? But Titanfall 2 is so much more than just a mech fighter. You can also glide across walls and power slide on the floor as you enter a room. Man, it feels good to kill someone while doing that. Movement is honestly what makes this campaign so much fun, and it'll switch things up constantly to keep it interesting. You'll be jumping around kicking people in the face in an assembly factory, getting thrown by your titan across huge gaps, and even freaking time traveling. I was blown away by how fresh it continued to be the whole way through. Shadow Warrior 2 
This game is just as hilarious as it is over the top. Not only will you be slaying demons with a chainsaw left and right, but you'll also be listening to Lo Wang sarcastically comment on everything you see. The future just keeps getting futurier. Shadow Warrior 2 is so beautifully grotesque in all the right ways, and lets you feel unstoppable even against overwhelming odds. You can slice and dice everything that comes your way, and with friends, the missions are even better. So grab some katanas, put on your sunglasses, and have a bloody good time. Doom is one of the most over-the-top games I have ever played, and it is, personally speaking, my game of the year. In a world with mostly narrative-driven and slower cover-based shooters, Doom sets itself apart immediately by beginning your guns blazing adventure through hell within the first 30 seconds. And from then until the credits, it is a non-stop roller coaster against demons of all shapes and sizes that may come off as a bit repetitive, but it never fails to be satisfying. There is a story, but I mean, you're a one-man army plowing through hell. There's no time for that. Add in weapon upgrades, mini games, and an arcade mode that favors speed and quick rapid fire kills, Doom is far and away some of the most fun you will ever get with an FPS, if not in games, period. And the over the top award goes to... Titanfall 2! I never thought I would say this, but I loved shooters this year. They finally realized that you need to keep changing the gameplay to stay engaging. And Titanfall 2 does this in spades. You'll be jumping around terrain like a ninja when you're out of your mech, and decimating anything standing in your way when you're in it. From ridiculous boss fights to an outstanding multiplayer mode, Titanfall combined a gritty first-person shooter with the over-the-top campiness to make a truly memorable experience. Our next award is for Best Game Design. As you know, we love talking game design on this channel, so this is the one award that comes back every year. 2016 had lots of games that blew me away, but these nominees either tried something new in regards to gameplay, or just refined what we've already seen before to an unbelievable standard. Level design, character design, and overall game feel all play a role in this, and these games nail it to the degree that they've stuck with me long after finishing them. Let's get right to it. Fury. I was sold on Fury just from its art design and music alone, but when you dig deeper, it has a fascinating set of mechanics. Each boss in this game is a test of endurance and skill, but there are so many ways to tackle each one. Obviously, you can shoot with your gun or chop them with your sword, but you can also charge these attacks for more damage, although it'll leave you exposed. You can parry and dodge for a better attack angle or to avoid incoming damage, and above all, each boss has a different strategy and moveset, so you have to learn the right puzzle pieces to take them down. Fury was just the right combination of challenge and excitement. Oh, and some boss music too. All I heard about Overwatch when it was first released was how there are 21 playable characters, but they all handle completely different from each other. Which seemed unrealistic, but man, after I played it, yeah, they really do. So much of Overwatch's gameplay is streamlined. All characters move at around the same base speed, and everyone has unlimited ammo, so you can focus on the variety of abilities the heroes bring to the table. There is no regular deathmatch mode. Instead, you have an objective that you must accomplish as a team, and eliminations play a much smaller role so that you can work as a cohesive unit to reach your goal. However, there are still things like play of the game to reward players that do exceptionally well. The Overwatch development team works tirelessly to make sure the game is balanced, polished, and most of all, super fun. Owlboy. Purely from the trailer, you wouldn't expect Owlboy to be that inventive. It just looked like a simple adventure game with an owl carrying a guy that shoots stuff and you fly through some rings or something. But when you actually play it, you realize there's so much care and detail put into every aspect of the experience. You'll journey all over the place trying to solve the mysteries of the relics and face some wildly different enemies and worlds in the process. From the variety of partners and abilities to the memorable boss fights and set pieces, Owlboy just gets it and gives the pixel art platformer a fresh coat of paint. And the winner of the Game Design Award is... Owlboy! More than anything else, what Owlboy has going for it is polish and charm. This was not a game that was hastily thrown together for a quick buck, but clearly a passion project that had so many hearts poured into it. The level design and puzzles were creative, and each scene had something new to offer. Characters had complex backgrounds and motives that made them so much more than simple NPCs. But most important, it was enticing, and I couldn't put the controller down until I finished it. And that's hard to come by these days. 
Next up is the most disappointing award. While there were a lot of great games this year, without a doubt there were plenty of bad ones too. From unfulfilled promises to lackluster final products, there were several titles that left people wanting more, or at least a refund. Not every game can live up to expectations, but these nominees were exceptionally crummy in faulty design choices and how they handled fan outcry afterward. Now, I wanted to address The Witness real quickly. Yes, I didn't enjoy it much when it came out and made a whole video about it, but now, after the dust has settled, I can understand what it's trying to do, and that it's more just not a game for me. So basically, I'm over the salt, and I don't think it's deserving of this award. Anyway, whew, here we go. No Man's Sky. I started to worry about this game as soon as I saw statistics of what it was trying to accomplish online. Quintillions of planets, all unique and different. A universe so big that while it is supposedly online, you'll probably never come in contact with anyone else. And while it is a giant feat to achieve, it didn't translate to a grand adventure. Combined with advertised features that were never implemented and radio silence from the developers for months, players were disappointed to say the least. Mighty Number 9 it wasn't really a huge surprise that Mighty No. 9 was bad, but seeing the final product and all the hopes and dreams of what it could have been be flushed down the toilet was certainly a letdown for those that backed the game. A rebooted Mega Man spiritual successor sounds nice on paper, but due to poor management and now notorious delays, Mighty No. 9 became a joke before it was even released. Now what we're left with is an annoying, poorly made platformer with pizza explosions. Let me repeat that. Pizza. Explosions. So I'll be upfront in saying that I don't actually dislike Star Fox Zero. With that said, it's hard to deny that it failed to live up to expectations. Many would say it's been nearly two decades since we got a proper Star Fox game. Miyamoto's general secrecy mixed with the constant delays built a ton of hype for Star Fox Zero only for it to tragically crash. It has some of the least intuitive controls I've ever seen in a game, and while you can get used to it, it just requires far more commitment than most players are willing to put into it. Due to Zero's poor performance, we're probably not going to get another traditional Star Fox game for another 10 years. Which sucks. In the meantime, maybe we'll get an HD remake of Star Fox Adventures. Anyone? Huh? Huh? And the loser is... No Man's Sky. This one probably seemed too obvious, but man were people really pissed about this one. While the gameplay itself isn't necessarily broken or completely dysfunctional, it didn't deliver on what fans were hoping for. It got boring really quickly, and even though there are near infinite possibilities, it somehow ended up looking all the same. The breadth of scope ended up hindering the goals and overall achievements that the game was hoping to produce. It truly is a showcase of how size without depth can cause major problems in game development. Our last award before Game of the Year is for Best Story. Sometimes it's easy to forget that a compelling narrative is important in feeling a connection with characters in a game. While many titles can excel with purely fun gameplay mechanics, a deep story can draw us in and make us care about what happens next. Luckily, 2016 had lots of games that caught me by surprise in how they told their tales. And while some people will write off walking simulators as not true games, they still can give such a meaningful experience if they're done correctly. Your nominees are Inside. Now, this is an interesting one, as Inside doesn't really have an in-your-face narrative, but rather tells it subtly through the background and scenes happening around you. As you journey farther and farther into the game, you realize that something is truly wrong with this metropolis, as people are being forced via mind control to behave how they would like. There are several security measures trying to keep you out and guards wanting to kill you at every turn, so when you reach the end and see a huge spoiler that is seriously too crazy to think up yourself, you're left with a lot of questions and not not many answers. It's something that has still stuck with me long after playing, and no matter if you thought it was good or bad, it certainly was memorable. Oxen Free. What begins as a simple teens go to a deserted island to get away and have a fun weekend turns into a paranormal fright fest that is not what I was expecting going in. I played Oxenfree with no previous expectations, and I was intrigued by the depth of the storytelling. You get an idea of how Alex thinks based on your responses to questions, but you also learn about her tragic backstory and how it all ties into the current theme. The voice acting is great, and while the gameplay takes a backseat to the plot, the twists and turns that play out kept me engaged the whole time. You see and hear ghosts, people die and come back to life, you jump through time warps and have to solve the mystery of the island. Oxenfree shocked me, in a good way. And much like Stranger Things or Westworld, it's a fresh take on an overdone trope of years past. 
Earlier this year, developer Camposanto delivered a game about escapism and avoiding your problems, something the average human being can easily relate to. This is what the player experiences in Firewatch after protagonist Henry takes a job as a park ranger in the remote forests of Wyoming. The gorgeous backdrop of the Shoshone National Forest is the perfect getaway for Henry and his boss Delilah, and we as the player echo that sentiment. The game is intentionally crafted with stellar attention to detail and interactions to astound you with its beauty. And when the conflicts and cracks start to show up in the story, the allure of the forest suddenly starts to crumble. And that is the beauty of the narrative in Firewatch. And the winner is... Firewatch! I did not think I would connect with a story based on forest rangers, but Firewatch blew me away with how instantly I was drawn in. The voice actors who played Henry and Delilah did such a phenomenal job at delivering purposeful and often sarcastic lines that were just a pleasure to listen to. Sure, you walk around the trees and investigate disturbances, but the story that unfolds is not only captivating, but emotional and touching. As a happily married man, Henry's struggle with his wife hit home so hard for me. I couldn't imagine having to go through what he was, and I wanted to see what happened to him next. It's incredible how well I connected with a character that has an established personality, backstory, and voice, but I did, and we need more games like Firewatch in the future. It's finally time. Let's give out the Game of the Year Award. This was easily the hardest award for me to narrow down. There were so many fantastic games this year, and even just condensing it to five nominees was hard enough. Just know that all of these games, and even more that I couldn't fit on this list, are great. 2016 was a great year for gaming. But of course, there must be a winner, so without further ado, your nominees are... Dark Souls 3 the series has finally ended, but I can't think of a better way to finish the Dark Souls franchise. All the things I loved about the games are here. Beautiful worlds, deep hidden lore, crazy difficult bosses, and secrets galore. They did a wonderful job of giving us so much new, but also several nods to the previous entries, and connecting the dots in between. I played Dark Souls for the challenge, and it lived up to that expectation, but I'm always blown away at all the little details it includes as well. I'm excited to see what From Software does next, but Dark Souls 3 was a journey I won't soon forget. Overwatch I didn't expect to enjoy Overwatch as much as I did. It's hard for me to get into shooters, but obviously Blizzard's newest IP isn't like most of them. Everything is so bright and vivid, from the maps to the roster. All of the characters have distinctive personalities, playstyles, and purposes. No match of Overwatch feels the same because of how diverse the teams can be. And each hero is fun to play as, even the less desirable positions like support. With how much the dev team is updating and making changes, I think Overwatch could be around for a long time to come. Owlboy Sometimes you go into a game hoping it will be something special. Since Owlboy was right up my alley in regards to genre, I was really wanting it to succeed, and by golly, it was awesome! Of course, this game was visually sublime and had enjoyable levels and mechanics, but I was treated to a heartfelt story as well. Otis is unlike most heroes, being a mute and an outcast, but that's what makes him so appealing as a character. He's different. The whole package was exactly what I was wanting, and it went above and beyond in its charm. Momodora, Reverie Under the Moonlight This one sort of came out of nowhere for me, but it was exactly what I needed at the time. Combining 2D Metroidvania exploration with challenging Dark Souls-esque bosses seemed like a match made in heaven. Much like Owlboy, the art was stunning and also had a deeper story hidden below the surface. Momodora is the kind of game I can play over and over and over again, and what you put into it is what you'll get out of it. Whether I'm trying to beat it as quickly as possible in a speedrun, or finding all the secrets and collectibles, Reverie Under the Moonlight is delightful and gripping the whole way through. Hyper Light Drifter I actually didn't like this game at first. I made the mistake of playing it while I was in a call with friends and I got lost and didn't know where to go next, but I gave it another shot, this time with my full focus, and wow, Hyperlight Drifter is amazing! I love that even without a single word spoken in the entire game, you know what you need to do, and it's open-ended enough to let you figure out the best way to tackle your goal. It's pretty brutal, enemies and bosses don't mess around, but it can feel so rewarding when you pull off a tough battle. If you like dashing around, exploring, and a sort of 80s cyberpunk ancient ruins aesthetic, you really need to check out Hyperlight Drifter. And the game of the year is... Overwatch! 
While the concept of a cartoony MOBA shooter isn't something new, there are so many elements causing Overwatch to be successful. A creative cast combined with animated shorts coming out before the game was even released caused players to feel a bond with their favorite characters. The hype for Sombra's debut is an obvious example of how much breathing can intensify, but of course, this wouldn't matter if it wasn't fun to play. I can't even think of the amount of precision and dedication it takes to make Overwatch balanced and enjoyable, but Blizzard seems to be working non-stop, adding little tweaks to make the best experience possible. With 23 playable heroes and counting, it's sort of mind-boggling to think of the amount of playtesting that requires. Overwatch doesn't have a single-player campaign, but it doesn't need one because it built a community outside of the game. And with special events and new content spicing things up all the time, Overwatch could be the go-to game to play with friends for years to come. So there you have it! Those are my favorite games of 2016. But I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the games you enjoyed most this year? Tell me in the comments below, maybe for these categories I listed, or make up your own. Thanks for sticking around to the end, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with a buddy. And I'll see you guys next year. Stay frosty, my friends. Huge thanks to my guests this year, it was a pleasure having them on. You can check out their channels or Twitters in the description below. And if you ever want to support the channel, you can do that through Patreon, like these amazing people right here.